Florida Republican, Senator Marco Rubio, is on the Intelligence and Foreign Relations Committees and joins me now. Good morning, Senator. Good to have you Good with us. Uh, are Thank these you. criminal offenses at the IRS they as are. you see them? Well, they're criminal offenses and under existing law for supervisors, not for the, the ground level employees. And that's, I have actually a bill that makes it a criminal offense for them as well. Let's, let's understand what we're talking about here. We're not talking about a mistake. We're talking about a deliberate abuse of power. And I can't think of a more powerful agency in the U.S. government than the IRS. It affects every single American. Every single American. And what it means to get in trouble with the IRS is they can take away your wages, they can take away your home. I mean, it's a very, very powerful agency. And you have people in that agency that deliberately targeted conservatives. Conservatives because of, they were called the Tea Party or a Liberty Group or they were fighting to make the country a better place. It's just an outrage. Yeah. It is a crime. An abuse of power is a crime. You know, the president said that he was outraged, that this uh, behavior was intolerable. Uh, he stopped short of talking about throwing the legal book at these folks. And the big question on that would be why? I mean, if it is illegal, and as you point out, these laws are on the books already. If you really want to make a statement as president about how egregious you believe this is, why would you not want to do that? Know. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, look, I think what he should have said yesterday is in addition to it being outrageous, we are, you know, we want the Justice Department to fully investigate this. And if this has been done deliberately and there's a crime here, people will be prosecuted no matter at what level of the IRS that they're in. But look, the president doesn't have clean hands in this because, as I said yesterday on the floor of the Senate, every this organization of his, this administration has created a culture of intimidation. It's his campaign. It's this White House. It's basically an attempt to muscle anyone who is their political opponent, opponent and to use what Whatever power they have at their disposal to intimidate people who they don't agree with. So whether it's the Associated Press, whether it's witnesses at the State Department, or whether it's using the IRS to go after groups that don't agree with the Obama agenda, this is an administration that has created a culture of intimidation through its campaign and through the White House throughout the federal government. Well, you know, a lot of folks out there would, would say that, that you can't make that line. You can't draw that connection uh, in this IRS case. They would say uh, that, you know, this really comes down to some low-level IRS uh, individuals in Cincinnati and perhaps Washington and New York and that the president uh, has clearly, you know, had an arm's length from this thing. Well, listen, we have the evidence that people like Mr. Vandersloot, who was a con contributor to the Romney campaign, he was attacked in an Obama website. They, they, they outed him or they, they attacked him as one of the eight uh, bad people that were supporting Mitt Romney. Within a few weeks, he had two IRS audits, not one, but two IRS audits coming after him. So this is an, this is an organization, the Obama campaign, combined with the Obama White House that has created a culture of intimidation, of hardball tactics against their political opponents. It's not just the IRS. It's the NLRB that went after Boeing for moving their, their facilities from Washington State to South Carolina. And there'll be other cases like this that I'll be talking about in the days to come. So there is a connection to, in the sense that they've created a culture of intimidation where this type of behavior is rewarded and modeled and, quite frankly, in my opinion, encouraged. All right. So, so they're on offense now on this. And as I said, they want to distance themselves from this act. They've they, you know, made sure that the uh, head of the acting head of the IRS resigned. What are you going to do uh, in, in your capacity to try to, to prove that there is a connection that goes higher up the food chain here on this issue uh, while they're trying to make sure that everybody believes that there absolutely is not? What will you do well, to try uh, to prove uh, that? Number one, I'll continue to talk about this culture of intimidation, about how this White House and this administration loves to demonize their political opponents. They're not content with just debating the merits of the issue. They want to convince people that anyone who doesn't agree with them on any issue is a bad person. And so we're going to continue to point to how that culture of intimidation trickles down to the federal government and its agencies. We're going to continue to call for criminal investigations, and we're going to look for a way to change the law so that it is a crime. It is a crime for an IRS employee to target people based on their political leanings, to leak documents to the press for political purposes. It's just wrong. It's an abuse well, of power. Let me ask no you one this. should stand for that. Do you believe that people uh, in the White House or the president or people who worked on the campaign were aware of the actions that the IRS was taking? Well, I can't, I didn't say that. I don't know they were aware of it. What I know they're aware of is the culture they've created where that kind of behavior not just is tolerated, but potentially even encouraged. Because when you create a culture of intimidation, when your campaign and others go around saying, if you oppose us, if you oppose our agenda, we're going to muscle you. We're going to muscle you using any means at our disposal, including governmental agencies. When you create that kind of environment, this is the kind of thing that happens. And this is what happens when administration becomes all about politics. 
This is a president that's 24 campaigning all the time. Even now, he's got a full-time political apparatus ongoing throughout the country because it's all about politics for them. It's all about gaining the upper hand. It's all about demonizing their opponents. It's all about crushing the people who stand in their way. It's an old-school, hardball politics that, quite frankly, has no place in our governing mechanisms in the federal government. So that's what leads to this kind of behavior. All right. We'll see. Uh, we'll see where it goes from here, and we'll see if that culture uh, is something that's proven out as this story continues to be told. Senator Rubio, thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.